Hello, Dr. Joe here of the AskDrJoe.org and the 2020Forum.com. So, um, in my last video on the probiotics, uh, somebody left a comment regarding the fact that I didn't explain much about what probiotics are all about, and I felt I needed to correct that in this very video. So, in this video, I've set myself a challenge, and the challenge is that I need to talk to you about what probiotics are, everything about it, including the history, the strains uh, of the bacteria, as well as uh, the benefits. And in fact, I recap the natural food sources of probiotics as well in this very video in six minutes flat. So um, that was the challenge. Let's do it. So what are probiotics? Well, probiotics are live microorganisms and they could be bacteria or yeast that are believed to have health benefits to the human body. Okay bacteria or yeast that are believed to have health benefits to the human body. And I have underlined the word they believed, and I'll come to that in a minute because uh, all is not what it seems. Um, many of the microorganisms in probiotic products are the same or they closely resemble microorganisms that live naturally in our bodies. Now, the other thing is that probiotics are usually regarded as either friendly or good bacteria, and they are beneficial to health in the right amount. Okay, you got to have the right amount uh, because if you have too little, then you don't get the benefits. Uh, so you have to optimize the amount of the probiotics for you to get the health benefits. Now, how did probiotics come about? Well, we owe it to this gentleman here. He's a Russian. His name is Eli Mechnikov. And uh, Eli, in 1907, uh, noticed that Bulgarian peasants lived quite long. And when he examined their diet, he realized that they consumed lots of yogurt. He then theorized that the consumption of the yogurt was the reason the, these peasants lived quite long. And that is how uh, we took notice of what probiotics actually are. So we owe it to Eli Meshnikov, uh, who is a Russian scientist. So on this slide here, I thought I would draw a parallel between antibiotics and probiotics such that you can uh, see the contrast between them, okay? So for antibiotics, when you take them, um, you know, the aim is to get rid of unfriendly bacteria. That's the whole idea behind them. Probiotics, however, they offer you friendly bacteria. Okay, that's what they do. You know, they give you friendly bacteria. For antibiotics, you need them when the occasion calls for it, usually when you have an infection. For probiotics, you need them all of the time if you can help it. Antibiotics, when you consume them for whatever reason, usually infection, they don't discriminate between good bacteria and harmful bacteria. They wipe out everything, okay? They, they completely wipe out. Meanwhile, for probiotics, on the other hand, they lay down only helpful bacteria. So that's a sharp distinction between them. And for antibiotics, the fact that they don't discriminate between good bacteria and harmful bacteria, that means you want to use them as less often as possible. Meanwhile, probiotics, because they're friendly, they're supposed to improve our health, well, you want to use them as often as possible. So what are the common probiotic bacteria strains? Well, I thought I'd give you about four here. Uh, Lactobacillus is one of them. Bifidobacterium, you know, quite popular, these two. And uh, there's also Legil Lactobacillus and Saccharomyces. These are the common strains of uh, probiotics that you will find. There are others, by the way, uh, but these are the common ones. So what are the benefits of probiotics? Well, what I have said here is that a lot of the claims that are made, they don't have indisputable, and I've underlined that as well, they don't have indisputable scientific backing. So you've got to take what the retailers are telling you with a pinch of salt, um, just uh, for you to note. Uh, now, that said, uh, these are some of the claims. Some are supported by science, but the science is not indisputable, okay? It's not conclusive. So, one is that probiotics may improve gut health. IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, is one of them. In particular, there's some suggestion that when you consume probiotics, 
you will improve IBS. There's also some suggestion that probiotics may improve our physical brain health. Also, some suggestions, some signs that uh, probiotics may help with diabetes management. Um, another benefit of probiotics is that they may promote heart health. Another benefit of probiotics is that they may improve mental health, in particular depression. It's not conclusive, but there is some suggestion that uh, probiotics may improve depression. Skin health is another. Um, you know, skin dryness and acne, also not conclusively proven, but there is some science to support that. Um, so it's worth a shot, but it's not conclusive. I need to add that caveat, please. Another benefit of probiotics is that they may boost immune health as well. So what I've said here is that please do not fall for the probiotic supplement hype. Use your judgment. My recommendation is that you should go for natural food sources of probiotics. And if you're going to consider using probiotic supplements, it's probably a good idea you let your doctor know about it. And, uh, you know, here's my list of natural probiotic food sources. I've already done a video on this, but I just thought I'd do a recap here. The first one is sauerkraut. Uh, kimchi is another. Tempeh is another. That's, you know, that's tempeh you've seen on the left there. Nero. Okay, miso and then pickles. Kefir is another and it's quite readily available. And yogurt is another. And I've said here, unadulterated yogurt. You know, like Greek yogurt. Make sure it is unadulterated. Okay, so um, that was fun. Now, uh, a quick plug just before we proceed. Uh, this is my book on managing high blood pressure with lifestyle approach. Links to get the book right below this very video. Um, now, if you noticed in the food sources, I didn't mention kombucha. And the reason for that is I'm not particularly comfortable with the safety margin of kombucha, uh, which is usually sold as kombucha tea. So uh, that's why I don't recommend it. But if you're happy to have it, well, go ahead and have it. But I'm not a fan of kombucha tea. So uh, hopefully you got some value from this very video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Please like the video and also please share this video with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues. If you've got any questions, any comments regarding the content of this very video presentation, go ahead, leave your comments or questions down below. That's it for this video. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.